Talking about paying homage and giving thanks to the elements, right? We're talking about ancestor veneration. In hoodoo, there is a divine supreme energy, God. So anybody who's Christian and you in turmoil because you don't know if hoodoo goes against your Christianity, I'm here to tell you it does not. Hoodoo does not go against your Christianity, babes. It does not. Nobody is saying that the ancestors are God. Nobody is sitting at their altar saying, oh, ancestors, we worship you and worship you only. Oh, it's only you. Nobody's saying that. That's in your mind, babes. I don't know what they're teaching you. We're not doing that. Nobody's doing it. Nobody's at the water like, this is it. Nobody's doing it. Okay? Don't let the church fool you. I know they taught you. That, 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 that folks was worshiping water and worshiping the ancestors. You're giving honor. You're giving honor. The same way how, if somebody say, how's your grandma doing? And your grandma alive. You'll say, my grandma is good. You know, I love my grandma. Let me tell my grandma is this. My grandma cooks so good. She's amazing. You're honoring your grandma. If your grandma transitions, you're going to do the same thing. The same way if your grandma say, hey, can you come? I'm not feeling well. Can you come over here and bring me such and such and such? And you go bring it to her. When we say put out offering for your ancestors, it's the same thing. You bring in something for your grandma in honor of your grandma. Okay? You're just paying homage. You're just giving honor. That's what ancestor veneration is. It's giving honor for the energy that is our ancestors, for the existence that was and still is our ancestors. They're just no longer in physical form. The same way you would give honor to your elders, I hope. If you don't respect your elders, this is not the life for you. Okay? I would hope. I would hope you're giving honor and, and, and thanks to your ancestors. Okay? I mean, to your elders, it's the same thing with ancestors. You're just giving honor and thanks. So that's ancestor veneration. So in hoodoo, ancestor veneration... Honoring the elements, you giving thanks for the energy of the elements. You know how you, it, it, the Christians, you know how you say, thank God for this water. Oh, this water's so good. Let me, let me. Oh, thank God for this water. Oh, that just quenched my, this water was so good. I'm not saying, oh, holy water. Oh, holy water, I humbly bow to you. I thank you, holy water. You are the one and all. Nobody's saying that. You see how crazy that sounds when, when people be like, oh, you, you worshiping the elements. That's false idols. Who the hell is over here like, oh, holy water, thank you, thank you, thank you. Who's doing that? That's how delusional you, you like, what are you talking about? We're not doing that, okay? Please, please. All right? So that's what I mean when I say honoring the elements, Okay? That's what I mean when we say ancestor veneration and honoring the ancestors. Now, why do we have an altar? Why do you create an ancestor altar? Oh, that's blasphemous. Only altar I go to is in the church. Babes, it's an altar. Why do you go to the altar in the church? Come to the altar and pray. What the pastor say, come to the altar and pray. If anybody is in need of prayer, come to the altar. It's the pastor God. Don't you go to, when you want to pray. And the pastor tell you to come to the altar so they could lay hands on you. Hmm? Are you looking at the pastor as God? As you, are you looking at the altar as a negative thing? The altar is the gathering space. It's the sacred space to gather. That's all an altar is. It's the sacred space to gather. That's it. So the reason we have an altar in our homes is so that when we are at home, we can have a sacred space to gather. That is it. That's it. It's a special place. It's a cleansed place. It's a blessed place. Why is it special? Why is it cleansed? Because we are sure to clean it. We put things that are sacred, things that we value on the altar okay not things we worship things that we just value things that we are grateful for okay so on your altar you usually have now i'm about to tell y'all how to do an altar in hoodoo thank you i appreciate that i'm about to tell you how to do an altar in hoodoo listen close on your hoodoo altar hoodoo altar 
This is not an Ifa altar, a Santaria altar. This is not that. This is a hoodoo altar. You want to have something that represents each of the elements. Something that represents each of the elements. Thank you for the roses. Let's start there. You can put some flowers. Okay? Flowers, for example. Now, now, before I even give examples, I want to say follow your spirit. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just sharing examples and advice here. Follow your own spirit. And as I said earlier, I want you to also go do your own research on your own. I am not a Bible. I am not a holy book. Okay. I want you to go do your research on your own. Okay. Examples. Earth. Put up some flowers. Put a plant. Put some herbs. Represents earth. For water. Put a glass of water. Glass of purified water. Represents water. Fire. Put a candle. Represents the element of fire. Okay. Now for air. This is where your smudging comes into play. Okay. This is where your burning of the herbs come into play. Okay. When you want something that represents air. Represents wind. Represents that change. I got. I'll be having to stop myself y'all. Because I'll be. I, I'll be associating. Uh, You know. Any practitioners in here. The ATR. You know. If you started out hoodoo. And then you get initiated. You know how. We, you know, Orisha takes precedence. So we all, we always blending and meshing in. So when I'm speaking hoodoo only, I have to stop myself. Cause you see where I was about to go. I'd rather say, you know, when you, when you represent air, you burn those, those herbs. You want that wind. You want that change. You want that shift, that oh yeah energy. I had to stop myself. <laughs> okay. I'll be trying. Huh? <laughs> but yes, for air, the burning of the herbs. Okay. Could represent air. So we got the water. You got your fire with your candle. You got your earth. You could put out the actual herbs. You could put out flowers. You could put soil or dirt or anything. Something I do when I travel. When I travel, I collect sand or soil wherever I go. And I'll add a little bit to my altar. Okay? So you can have that on there. I advise that you get some white cloth. Okay? White cloth. You Ifa practitioners, you stay out these comments. This is not an Ifa altar. I'm working hard over here because, you know, I'm about to say that, you know, I'm about to say that white cloth represents it's different. Hoodoo is different. And if you are practicing hoodoo and you start to study ATR, you will see how it all goes together. And then you'll be able to see how our ancestors was really just carrying their traditional religions on over. OK, so that's why it's so hard not to talk about Orisha. And I'm talking about this altar in hoodoo because it all comes together. That white cloth is traditionally for Obatala, but it's not in hoodoo. In hoodoo, it just represents cleansing and purification. OK, protection. That's what the white cloth is for in hoodoo. OK, so just get you a white cloth. So you got something to represent each element. You got something to represent. You got the white cloth. Now you need representations for your ancestors. Now some of y'all may be, first of all, let me start with the people who know their ancestors and you know who you're talking about and who you want to venerate. You know those people, okay? Now, the thing about, uh, thank you, moderator, for working hard. I appreciate you. I see you. Now, you know, we ain't tolerating no foolishness in the chat, huh? I got good moderators. They on your ass. Okay. Now, when it comes to uh uh your ancestors that you know, you could if you got a picture, put a put a picture. Okay. Put a picture. If you got uh any type of jewelry, any type of rings, put that on there. Anything that belonged to them. I don't care if it's a t-shirt and you got to fold up the t-shirt. Any representation of ancestors that you know, add that to your altar. Please, I'll tell you for me personally, uh, of course, uh, you know, I'll get there, but I'll tell you for me personally, you know, uh, when, when, when people in my family transition, my family members know, you know, I'm, I keep the ID, I keep the ID. So I have my aunts, y'all know my auntie passed, I have my aunts, I have my granddaddies, I keep the IDs, that's something that I put in representation. So whatever it is for you, if you have anything that represents your ancestors who have transitioned, keep that on there, Okay. Peace. How you doing? Good day. Good day. Okay. Now, if you don't know who your ancestors are, here's what you want to do. 
Here's what you want to do. I want you to write a note to your ancestors. You don't know who they are. You don't know their names. But they know you. Your ancestors know you. I need you to hear me clearly. Your ancestors know you. They knew you before you were you. They know you. You may not know them by name. You may not know them by face, but they know you. They are listening. They are present. They just waiting for you to call on them. Okay? A mother knows her baby. A father, a good father knows his baby. Your ancestors know who you are. So I want you to write a note to your ancestors. And that will be your representation for your ancestors. And in that note, write whatever your spirit leaves, whatever you want to say to them, however you feel, write that to your ancestors. And allow that to be your representation for them. Okay? If you want to put anything in the note that's sacred to you, fold that up in the paper. Keep it folded. It shouldn't be face open for anybody to read. Keep it folded up. Okay? Seal it up good. And let that be your representation for your ancestors. All right? So on your altar already, you got something to represent all the elements. Your hoodoo altar, you got something to represent all the elements. You got uh, 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 something to represent your ancestors. You got your white cloth, okay? You got your white cloth. Now I need you to start adding offerings. Now what are offerings? Offerings could be anything you value, anything you value, or anything you know your ancestors value. Okay, offerings are anything you value and anything you know your ancestors value. All right, for example, if you got an ancestor who you know enjoyed alcohol, you would put their favorite alcohol on there. If you got an ancestor you know was a smoker, you add whatever they smoked, huh? Whatever they smoked, don't put if you want to put a little crack on your altar, that's your business. I'm not judging you. Should nobody even be over your altar like that. If you want to put a little crack on your altar, that's your business. I don't advise it, but that's your business. Whatever your spirit leads you to do. I just said whatever they smoke. If your ancestor was a cigarette smoker, put a cigarette. Your ancestor was a weed smoker, put a little weed. If your ancestor liked the little wooly, okay. If your ancestor was a uh, bonk of Hennessy, put a little bonk. Little Hennessy. Okay? That's your business. That's your business. You got a little line of powder on your altar. That's your business. I'm not telling you what to do. Okay? I'm not telling you what to do. I said an offering. Something you know they liked. Hmm? But that's, that's, that could be an example of an offering. An example of an offering could also be a ring or like some jewelry that you like. It could be a crystal. You could add crystals there. You could also add crystals there as your representation of earth, the earth element. Okay? But you could add a crystal. Y'all so foolish. You could add a crystal in anything you enjoy. Okay? Any type of offering. Food. Food. Now here, we got to clarify the food offering. Okay, and this is this is for any altar, whether you got a hoodoo altar or anything. For the food offering, babies, stop leaving the food there till it rot. Don't leave the food there till it rot. Please. That's nasty. Don't leave it there till it rots. Okay? Take it up before it goes bad. But food, right? You can put out anything you know your you put let me tell y'all something, vegans, vegetarians, pescatarians, I too, I, you know, I don't eat meat either, but y'all, you better not put that damn impossible burger on your damn altar. Don't you put that damn beyond meat nugget on your altar. You know good and hell well. You know good and hell well they wasn't eating that. Put what your ancestors like. 
They weren't eating no slutty vegan. Why aren't you putting a slutty vegan on the altar? That ain't what they asked for. And they weren't drinking no damn Kool-Aid. Y'all get on my nerves. Don't put that on there. You make you some greens. You make you some cornbread. You make you uh, some, some, some red rice or some jollof. When that Beyond Meat nugget come flying across the room and slap you across the face, what you gonna do? Don't you put no damn Beyond Meat nugget on that altar. Put what your ancestors like. Stop being selfish. Hmm? So that's what you do regarding food. You can also put fresh fruit. Fresh fruit. But again, this could also be used as uh, your land element representation. Put fresh fruit. Put an apple. Put some oranges. Put some lemons. Put things like that. Fresh fruit on the altar. That's a food offering as well. We, we think of food offerings for some reason. Yes, you could put cake, put sweets. Ooh, let's talk. That's hoodoo things, y'all. Because we all grew up with these hoodoo traditions, huh? How, uh, you know, you, you, if you grew up in a hoodoo family or a Gullah family or anything like that, Geechee family, you know, you know, you grew up being taught that you leave something sweet out. You leave something sweet for the spirits. So that's another thing you could have on your altar. Something sweet, a piece of candy, peppermint, something sweet, something sweet, okay? A piece of cake, something sweet, okay? Some sweet bread, something, something sweet. You put something sweet on your altar as well, okay? And that works. Put some coffee out, some tea, okay? Things like that, all right? So on your altar, you got your cloth. You got representations of every element. Um, you have your offering, something you valued. You have your representation of your ancestors, the pictures, uh, anything they wore, anything that they liked. Um, or you, go, you have your letter. And you can add that you have your letter that you write to your ancestors. You know, you have your food offerings. You have the drink offerings. And also, we cannot forget on our altar... Yeah, we about we about to get into the conversation. I talked about this the other day. No, I talked about this on another platform. On my live, put some coins on your altar. Put some coins on your altar. Put some real money on your altar. And I'm gonna tell. We're gonna talk about altar care after this. We're gonna talk about altar care too. I'm gonna tell you what to do with the food. I'm gonna tell you what to do with the drink. I'm gonna tell you what to do with the money. All of that. We're gonna talk about altar care. But we, right now, we're talking about building the altar, maintaining the altar. Now, put some money on that altar. If you want to use ancestor money, you can follow your spirit. Follow your spirit. You can use ancestor money if you want to. Follow your spirit. I advise real money, but you can use ancestor money if you want to. Let's tap into ancestor money. Ancestor money is money that is offered to the ancestors. Some people use real money and call it ancestor money. Some people use what's called uh, a Joe's paper. It's like fake money that's uh, essentially ancestor money is fake money. Okay, you could buy it off Amazon. Literally go to Amazon and type in ancestor money. You could buy it out of there. You could buy it out of Botanica. Any place like that will sell ancestor money, but it's usually made on like quick flammable paper, right? The reason it's made on a thin flammable paper is because... The idea behind ancestor money is that you are supposed to burn this money or some people submerge it in water and let it dissolve. And the idea of burning it or letting the money dissolve is that you are, yes, you could burn it or you could put it in water and let it dissolve. I've seen some people do that. The idea is that you are either paying debt to your ancestors or you are enhancing your ancestors' wealth on the other side. Okay. That's the idea of ancestor money. Some people do use checks. Yes. Me personally, I do not subscribe to the use of ancestor money. I personally, that's not my personal decision. But if that's your decision, I respect it. 
I respect it. Okay? That's the intention that it's used for. Now, I again, I don't specifically do it, but I am aware of who my ancestors was and how they were in present life. My ancestors who I venerate who were present, my grandmothers. I'm aware of how they were. I know their legacy. I know how they were, you know. Um, my grandmama didn't work for Nelnet. My grandmama ain't going to carry me for no student loan debt. Hmm. My granny was, was my, my other granny on my mother's side, she was a para. My, 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 my granny ain't, ain't keeping no credit card debt on me. For me personally. My grandmother, my, my well up on my father's side. She, I, I, I talked about it. She was like the woman from Lackawanna Blues. If you ever saw the movie Lackawanna Blues, that was my grandmother. That's how my grandmother was. She came from Panama, moved to New York, worked hard, bought a house, a two family home. And she opened her doors to everybody. My grandma house was that house. She opened her door to everybody. Everybody knew Maria. Everybody knew her. Okay. She, every, they, she, her house was that house. My grandmama is not a debtor. Okay. She's not a debt collector. She was a giver. So that's why I don't practice ancestor money for me personally. Okay. But if you are not aware of who your ancestors was, or you are just led and you feel like you have karmic debt, you feel like you owe, you know, practice the, the energy of burning ancestor money. You do that. Okay, practice the energy of burning ancestor money. You do that. But that's what ancestor money is for. However, there should always be some form of money on your altar, whether if it's ancestor money or it's real money. Okay, now somebody asked, where should your altar be? I saw that question. Your altar should be in a sacred space. Now here, who do practitioners, please listen to me close. Huh? Listen to me close. I talked about this yesterday. I know, thank you for the roses. I know that in hoodoo, hoodoo is free to practice. Okay? Hoodoo is free. You said times change. Everybody not welcome in my home. Exactly. Hoodoo is free to practice. I know this. Okay? Please, thank y'all for the love. I appreciate the gifts. Thank y'all. Y'all, listen to me. Listen to me close. You are allowed to do whatever it is you want. But just keep in mind that your altar is a sacred space, baby. Your altar is a sacred space, baby. Remember that. Everybody should not be able to stand over your altar and play over your altar. Nobody should be picking stuff up off your altar and looking at it and putting their energy in it. That carries energy. When somebody's standing over your altar and they like this, that's energy. Somebody picking stuff up off your altar, touching everything on your altar, that's energy. Okay? So your altar is supposed to be in a sacred space, a sacred place. You can have your altar. I don't care if you need to put it in a dresser drawer. If you got to empty out a dresser drawer and make room for it, you do that. You got to put it in a closet. Let me tell you. My first mentor in Ifa, his altar, he, Baba in the tradition over 60 years. His altar, you walk in his own home, you wouldn't even know he had an altar. He had a closet, a linen closet. His whole linen closet was his altar. You open it up. Wow. More of a shrine than an altar. Huge. That's, that's sacred space. Can't nobody get to his altar unless he invites them there. Think about your altar that way. Think about when we say sacred, that's what we mean. Nobody should be able to access it unless you invite them. Okay? Think about that. And I see people saying, well, what about my children? What about, your ch what about my children? You should be teaching your children hoodoo anyway. If you're a hoodoo practitioner or Ifa practitioner or, you know, Santeria practitioner, you should be teaching your children this anyway. So it's y'all altar. You can have a family altar. It's y'all altar. So it's not your, your altar is not necessarily off limits to your children because you are imparting this wisdom on your children and you're teaching them how to care for these things and teaching them that it's sacred. Even young babies, even young babies. Okay. Now, definitely if your baby is two or three, the altar shouldn't be any place low enough that uh, they can just come and knock stuff over and play on it. You want to keep it up high, but pick that baby up and teach them about that altar. 
Teach them how to give gratitude at that altar. Teach them what you're doing. You know, don't keep the practices sacred from your children. This is how we pass on tradition. We got to remember hoodoo is an oral tradition. Ifa is an oral tradition. So this is how you practice traditions. Okay, you got to... Um, you know, teach your children. I know some people with Shay and that sister, you know, and and, and I, I, I took the video as being in jest. But there was a sister who did a video and it, it was like, you know, one of, I don't know what you call it, but one of these videos. And she was like, the video it started out with her daughter dancing and she was like, little girl does, uh, who does voodoo on anybody that looks at her. And then she went to herself and was like, mother who teaches her. And people have feelings about that. But all she's saying is I'm teaching my daughter what they know, Let me what, what I do. Let me ask you a question. Did you have a choice of whether or not you was going to be a Christian or did your, your parents drag your ass to church? Hmm? See, we, we be hesitant. We be like, well, how do I teach my children? Same way your ass was taught to go to that church. What do I tell my children? Same thing you was told that made you spend the first two, three decades of your life worshiping a white Jesus. The same thing. Same way your parents instilled it in you. That's how you instill it in your children. Ain't no, ain't nothing special. It's the same thing. Don't hide the stuff from your children. When you making herbs and you brewing herbs and you brewing tea, your kids get sick and you say, hey, I'm making something up. You need to have your kids at that stove and say, we add in this bladder rack for this. We're going to add this dung quiet for this. We add in this Kanye because this Kanye does this. You teaching your children about everything. That's how we keep these traditions going. Okay, the same way your mama said, hey, come take this Benadryl. This Benadryl going to help you go to sleep. It's going gonna, it's gonna to help you feel better from that cold. You tell your children, hey, come drink this fire cider. This fire cider going to help you go to sleep. It's going to help relieve that cold. Come drink this Manuka honey and this Kanye pepper and this ginger because it's going to get that mucus up out you. The same way you was taught you teach your children. The same way. We gonna get up and we gonna say a prayer. Okay, why we saying a prayer? Tell them why you saying a prayer. Tell them why you doing certain things. Tell them why this is on the altar. All of that stuff, the same way you was taught about any other religion. Okay? So again, have your altar in a sacred space. Think of, when you think about sacred space, think about what is a place in my house that I could put in my altar that only people can see it if I invite them. Okay? And if you are a person where you know don't nobody come to your house anyway, then hey, shit, don't, you know, hey, you know, yes, teaching is the highest form of love. I say I agree with that. You know, don't, then put it wherever you want to put it, you know, put it wherever you want to put it. Now, altar in the bedroom. Some people be like, well, some people say you shouldn't put your altar in the bedroom. There are certain ATRs who do believe that, that you shouldn't put your altar in the bedroom or if your altar is in the bedroom, it should be covered. That's another thing. If you do live somewhere where you have nowhere to put your altar, you just, you keep that white cloth, you get you an extra white cloth and you just cover your altar when you know you have in company. That's an alternative. Okay. If you uh, have your altar in your bedroom and you want your altar in your bedroom, you can literally just place a white cloth in front of the altar. Say you're all at, in one, uh, one place I lived in. I used to have us. I always keep a variety of altars. You know, I'm a practitioner, so I have a variety of altars for different reasons. We're not going to get into that. So one of my altars was in my bedroom in a windowsill, but I also kept a drape in front of it. Okay, and when I wanted to, you know, kneel at my altar, I moved the drape out the way, and that's that's just it. So that's alternatives, okay? That's alternatives, all right? So keep it covered, keep it covered. Now, altar care, altar care. Let's move forward to that. Only um, let's start with candles. Keep a candle lit on your altar if you feel, you know, for fire safety and things like that. Of course, you're not gonna keep the candle lit when you are out the house and stuff like that if you don't feel comfortable. All right, if you don't feel comfortable. Don't keep it lit when you're out the house. When you come back in the house, light it again. So get that out the way because a lot of people always ask me that. I'm, I'm thinking about frequently asked questions in my mind. A lot of people always ask me that. Don't keep it lit if you can't, if you don't feel comfortable. Come back in the house, light it again, okay? Now, with the water. With your water on your altar, you need to make sure your water is clean all the time. A lot of times people will say, okay, you know, I see a lot of bubbles in my cup. I see a lot of bubbles in my cup. Yes, bubbles can. If you put your water out and within the first couple hours you see bubbles in the cup, yes, that can represent or symbolize that ancestors is present and they are dining. However, if that water has been sitting there for four days, 
I need you to understand the science of water. <laughs> yes, you're going to have bubbles. That's bacteria forming, babes. Okay, I need you to clean out that water. Clean that water. That's nasty. So cleanse your water. Keep your water fresh daily. And people be like, oh, that's too much. I don't change my water daily. Okay, every other day. Well, every other day is too much. You, you, you need discipline. We talked about this yesterday. Discipline, babes. Discipline. Discipline, babes. If drinking water every day, if you don't, what, don't you drink every day? If you had an elder live and present in your house that you was caring for, wouldn't you give them water every day? Think about ancestors the same way. Huh? Think about them the same way. Get some discipline about yourself. Stop making excuses to be lazy. My spirit led me to keep the food on the altar for 10 days. What elders are sitting there eating some 10 day old chicken? What elders is sitting there eating an apple that done rotted out? That was your lazy ego talking to your ass. Ain't no ancestor told you that. My grandmother used to say, lazy like my bean. You are lazy like my bean. Get up. Clean off that altar. Okay? Keep that food fresh. Keep that water fresh. What should you use to clean off your altar? You could use Florida water to clean off your altar. Preferably homemade. If you're a part of the wellness community, patreon.com backslash the queen If you're a part of the wellness community, you know I got a recipe in there for Florida water. But there are many recipes out there for Florida water. I just have my own. I share it with the wellness community. Okay, I have my own. But natural Florida water, please. If you don't feel like making natural Florida water, use the one that you get out the store. That's your business. But I also want you to note that if you look at the bottle, it says Florida water cologne. I digress. Do what you need to do. Use, your, use the Florida water out the store if you want to. I advise you make natural Florida water. If you don't feel like making natural Florida water, that's too much. You don't have the Florida water out, the Florida cologne out the store. Then get you some spirit water. How do you make spirit water? Spirit water is white rum and purified water. And that's all spirit water is. White rum, purified water. So make you some spirit water. Okay? That's it. Cleanse your altar. You have no excuse to have a dirty altar. You can literally make spirit water in a water bottle. White rum, the rest purified water. When it's time for you to cleanse your water, your, your altar, you get you a napkin or a towel. Wipe it down. That's it. Get you some herbs. You get you some basil. Whatever herb you use for purification, whatever you feel comfortable with. Palo, whatever. It's Palo Santo. I'm not talking about Palo the ATR. I'll be having. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Palo Santo. Get you some Palo Santo, some basil, some rosemary, whatever you feel comfortable with, and smudge it down. Smudge it down. That's how you cleanse your altar. Smudge it down. Okay? That's how you cleanse it. All right? What should you do with the money? With the money, like I said, if you use it, I already told you what to do with ancestor money, but I'm talking about the real money. When you put real money, real coins on your altar, okay, and you want to change it, you want to refresh it, because sometimes it'll add, it'll be a lot of money, and you'll be like, what should I do with this? You know, uh, it'll be a lot of money if, you, if you're doing it how you should be doing it. You, could, you put money on your altar anytime your spirit leads. I would hope that your spirit is leading you to put money on there anytime you feel abundant and blessed. Hmm? Anytime you feel abundant and blessed, anytime you receive a blessing, you should be putting a peace on your altar. I would hope that you know that your spirit is leading you to do that. But with the money on your altar, you not you don't take the money and spend it on yourself. You don't take the money and go buy yourself some new stuff. Come on, check your ego. Check your ego. 
This is money in honor of ancestors. So that money is is used for mutual aid. It's called mutual aid. Okay, shout out, shout out to the anti-capitalist, the anti-capitalist. Okay, if you're watching this, this is your time to shine. That money is used for mutual aid. Okay, I'll give you some examples of how I use it. If I'm in the store, right? Say, so say if I clean off my altar, I'm refreshing my altar and I gather up my ancestor money, the real money. Okay, I'm not confusing ancestor money for the artificial money. Real money. I'm gathering my real money from my altar and I, I, I go to the store. Got my ancestor money with me. Say I see a mother and she has children and she's buying groceries. Here you go, sis. Let me contribute to your grocery bill. I got you. And I just slide the money in her hand. Say if I'm on the way to the bodega and there's some children outside playing. Hey, y'all, I had a little extra money. I just wanted to give y'all for a blessing. Y'all go give it to y'all parents or do whatever you want to. Here you go, kids. Give it to the children. Say if I see someone, you know, who is who is in need, someone who is, you know, unhoused on the street. Here you go, brother. Let me bless you. Here you go. And honor my ancestors and honor my ancestors. You do things for other people in honor of your ancestors. You don't take that money off your altar and just feed yourself and spend it on yourself. Yes, community. I say, OK, you don't do that. You return it abundantly to the universe. You return it abundantly to the universe. That's a form of recycling. You return it abundantly to the universe. Same thing with the food. With the food, you're not feeding the food. Please listen closely to this. You're not feeding the food to people. You return it abundantly to the universe. You return it abundantly unto the earth. So if you got fruit, you you return it abundantly unto the earth. Okay. You will go outside by the base of a tree and you leave your fresh food and fresh fruit that came from your altar. Return it abundantly to the earth. Anything that comes that, that anything that is on your altar should be returned to the earth. That's altar care. Nothing on your altar should be anything that is not biodegradable. Everything should be biodegradable and able to be returned unto the earth. Okay? Everything on your altar should be biodegradable and returned unto the earth. That money from your altar should be returned unto the universe. It should be used for mutual aid. It should be used to build community. It should go towards someone who is unhoused. It should go towards making a child's day happy. It should go towards a mother who's feeding her children and needs to buy groceries. And she's in the grocery store line and you go bless that sister with a few extra coins that came from in honor of your ancestors. So that's altar care. So if you ever have your altar, you're wondering, what should I do? I don't know what to do with this. How could this be returned unto the universe? That's how your mind should be working. How could this be returned unto the universe? Thank y'all for the likes. I appreciate it. How could that be returned unto the universe? That's what you got to start thinking in your mind. Okay, everything on your altar. How could I be returned unto the universe? How could this be returned? It should always be functioning that way. So that's altar care. So 